The Lost World is pretty forgettable, I'm not gonna lie. As a kid, I remember watching Jurassic Park 1 and Jurassic Park 3, but I always wondered what the second one was. Then I saw clips of the San Diego scene on YouTube and was like, oh, THAT'S THE SECOND ONE! Jurassic Park 3D was coming to theater soon, and one day, I went grocery shopping with my mom and came across The Lost World on Blu-ray and DVD. And I was like, Mom, can I please get this? And my mom said, you can get this, but if you get this, we aren't going to go see Jurassic Park 3D. I made my decision. And bought The Lost World. I mean, I hadn't seen The Lost World at the time, and I've watched Jurassic Park 3 million times by that point, so there was no point in seeing it again, especially in 3D. I got home, popped in the DVD, and... It was something. I'm not saying this movie is bad. It's actually fun and entertaining, but it's not a movie I can say that has a great story. I rewatched the movie twice over the course of the first time I saw it and now. And I'm gonna be watching this movie once again, but this time with one of my pals from Epic Style, Sugarvolt, and another good friend of mine, the Armenian Hellbringer, Koa. They haven't seen this movie, and I want to get a first time watching input from them and get their reaction. So, we hopped on Discord and watched the movie legally. So, let's see why The Lost World wasn't so memorable, and why it doesn't live up to the first movie. After the success of Jurassic Park, Steven Spielberg went to Michael Crichton and was like, We need a sequel! And Michael Crichton was like, I don't know man, I don't really write sequels. Shut the fuck up, get to writing. So, in 1995, Michael Crichton wrote and released The Lost World. The book was also a great success. Not as great as the first one, but still great. Steven Spielberg took the book and made it into a movie. So, filming for this movie went from September to December of 1996, and in May of the following year, the movie was released in theaters. Oh my god! Oh my gosh! Oh, Here we go. It's on a le This is an illegal website, by the way. Uh, this is Netflix, you know. So. Yeah, this is. Well, it's not Netflix. It's it's it, clearly Voodoo. Yeah. It's it's a streaming service. It is legal. It's illegal. The whole point is it's illegal. All right. So now we're gonna watch um, the Lost World Jurassic Park. So uh, let's do this shit. The Lost World begins on the beaches of not Isla Nublar, but a new island, Isla Sorna, which in English means Sarcasm Island. We see the Bowman family cruising and landing on the island for vacation. Little Kathy Bowman strays off from her family and finds the first dinosaur of the movie, the Compsognathus, or the Compi. She tries to feed it, but eventually a bunch round up and start attacking her. This scene is actually taken from the first scene of the first Jurassic Park book. But we then get this. Don't tell me they ate her, bro. They didn't eat her, did they? I don't know. We're just going to have to find out. I think Jeff Goldblum ate her. What the hell is that transition, though? W transition, in my opinion. You just hate it. Jeff Goldblum reprises his role as Ian Malcolm, and Ian doesn't look too good here. He's told the media about his encounters with dinosaurs at Jurassic Park, but nobody believes him. As a matter of fact, they think he's crazy. Oh my gosh, they're at the Wayne Manor. Batman. Is this the Batman crossover everyone's been wanting? I want a Croods crossover. <laughs> <laughs> he visits John Hammond's manor and comes across Lex and Tim from the last movie. He asks, What's up, diggity dogs? And uh, they tell him nothing's good because the guy who called out Ian for being crazy took over Engine. Who called him out for being crazy? This guy right here. This is Peter Ludlow, Hammond's nephew. Ludlow is actually my least favorite antagonist in the franchise. Not that the ones in the other movies are good either, but Ludlow for sure is the weakest. There's nothing interesting about his character. He's so two-dimensional, and there's nothing to his character besides him having his secret project succeed. We cut to Hammond and Malcolm discussing why he was called upon. You heard him. There's actually two islands. Isla Nublar's labs were just for the visitors to see in the park tour, while most of the dinosaurs were actually bred and nurtured on Sorna. 
A hurricane hit the island and everyone had to abandon the island and let the dinosaurs escape from where they were being held. Ludlow's secret project consists of bringing the dinosaurs of Sorna to Hammond's first park location, Fort Newborn, Jurassic Park San Diego. He's sending a team of four people to Sorna to get photographic evidence that dinosaurs should probably be left alone, and to have people side with Hammond to prevent Jurassic Park from being built on the mainland. This team comprises of Eddie Carr, a field equipment expert, Vince Vaughn, that's it, just Vince Vaughn, and a paleontologist, and of course, Malcolm. But Malcolm doesn't want to go and tries to go call off the expedition, but he eventually finds out that the paleontologist is actually his girlfriend, Sarah Harding, daughter of this guy from the first movie. He finds out about this and is like, nah, you can't do this to her. But Hammond's like, nah, uh, uh, you can't do anything to me because she volunteered and is already there. Malcolm shits himself and plans to go to Sorna to go rescue Sarah. Hammond knows what he's doing, that sick bastard. That dude's a, the world's largest finesser. <laughs> he just <had> <laughs> literally because he knew he was gonna go, bro. <laughs> <laughs> We're introduced to Eddie Carr and Vince Vaughn, and also Kelly, one of Malcolm's kids from one of his many ex-wives. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Some name. Uh, oh my gosh. Kelly came to say bye to Malcolm, but homie doesn't want to be left alone with a babysitter, and wants to go with Malcolm. Yeah, but I want you to crack on me a little bit, ground me or something, send me to my room. You know what? Why the, why'd you want that? I joked in the Jurassic Park review about how Ian isn't like himself in this movie. That charming, laid-back, joke-cracking Malcolm is gone. He's just worried and upset the whole movie. Of course, I can't blame the character for that. He literally endured an island filled with dinosaurs and almost died. But now he has to endure it all over again. The thing is, his character is soulless, and that everything he says sounds so monotone. Even in his two-second appearance in Fallen Kingdom, he still feels like the Ian Malcolm we all know and love. He's so different in this movie, that when I first watched this movie, I was questioning if he was even played by the same actor. Of course a lot of it was because I was a dumb stupid kid who couldn't identify people, but that's because he looked so different compared to his first appearance. But still, that says something about this character. If you had told me back then that this was a different character, I'd 100% believe you. Anyways, Kelly sneaks into one of the trailers that are going to be used for the operation and hides there. This is that Dragon Ball GT stuff. I didn't watch it because GT's not canon. <laughs> uh, uh, GT's so mid. Our team heads out to Site B and starts looking for Sarah. There's a lot of people out there who don't like the addition of a new island, but I do. And as a matter of fact, I think it's better than Nublar. It's more than just a setting, a lot of the lore holds deep within Site B. It leaves the viewers trying to figure out what was happening on the island before the hurricane and after the events of this movie. Zorna becomes even more important lore-wise in the next movie. I also like the environment of the island. It's not just jungles and plains. There's different biomes. The redwood forest biome makes it even more distinct from Nublar. With Nublar, there isn't much to hide lore-wise besides the fact that it's just a park. And the few questions that there were about Nublar were already answered in Camp Cretaceous. It's just a shame the series, especially the second half of it, glosses over Sorna and leaves it to their marketing websites to fill in the gaps. I love Sorna so much that I even have a framed poster of the map. Anyways, back to the movie. Our teams find Sarah and Sarah gets in some pictures of these stegosaurs and eventually gets a picture of this baby stegosaur. But her camera has a seizure and scares the baby, and now the herd is in defense mode attacking Sarah. You dumbass Sarah Harding. Shoddy kinda thick. <laughs> Come on. She escapes and after that they head to their trailer. They see that someone was trying to cook, but turns out it was Kelly burning down everything. Malcolm freaks out and tells Sarah and Kelly they gotta leave. Calm the fuck down, chill. Damn. Crack down on her. What a dick writer. Sarah's like, uh-uh, this is my choice. I do what I want to do and I don't need you telling me this. 
They hear helicopters and find out that Ludlow sent InGen to go capture dinosaurs for Jurassic Park San Diego. We then get one of the best scenes in this movie, the dinosaur game trail scene. We're introduced to the best thing in this whole movie, Roland Timbo, played by Pete Postlewaite. He's Ludlow's main man for capturing the dinosaurs, and he doesn't want to be paid by Engine. All he wants is to hunt one of the tyrannosaurs, a male, a buck only. After the whole wrangling, we get to see a compi checking out this guy, Dieter Stark, Roland's second in command. This guy's an asshole. He tases the poor thing. Hopefully really bad things happen to him. After that, we see that Roland and his good pal Ajay found the T-Rex lair with a baby Rex eating in his nest. They're gonna use him as a trap in some way to lure the parents by... BREAKING THE DAMN THING'S LEGS?! THAT'S FUCKED UP! Anyways, we then see Ludlow's camp and he's having a Zoom meeting with the board members of InGen. Our main crew sees us and is like, we gotta set the dinosaurs free. And Vince Vaughn is like, oh, I'm Hammond's backup plan! And uh, lets the dinosaurs loose, creating mayhem and destroying everything and their communications. Me when the function got Hennessy. <laughs> Paul when he pops a perk. <laughs> Vince and Sarah find the baby T-Rex and take it inside the trailer. Kelly's like, fuck this shit, and goes with Eddie Carr to the high hide, a contraption built to say stay from the dinosaurs. But don't kidnap the damn thing! The parents are gonna come find the poor thing! Oh wait, they do. There's not one T-Rex in this movie, but two. Well, three if you count the baby, but that's besides the point. They return the baby and set it free outside. The parents are pissed though, as they should be, and throw the trailer off the cliff. This is the best scene in the whole movie, and the T-Rex animatronics are phenomenal. I especially like the bull T-Rex, big Papa Pump Rex as I like to call him. Eddie Carr comes to save them but fails when the T-Rexes come back for round 3, and Lady and the Tramp the fuck out of poor Eddie. This is the most gruesome death in the whole franchise. I wish Eddie played a bigger role in this movie, and maybe add some emotional tension to his death because after this, everyone is like, OH NO! Anyways, the InGen team helps our main heroes up and decide to team up, and try to reach communication. Ludolo says that the communication center at the worker village is run through geothermal power, so it's possible to call for help, but there is a catch. Since the worker village is in the interior of the island, that means all the carnivores are there, especially the velociraptors. Everyone starts heading to the worker village, and on their way, they take a break. Dieter has to take a fat piss and tells his guy named Carter to be on the lookout if anything goes wrong. But Carter can't hear him because he's listening to some bangers. Dieter goes too far and finds some compies and is eventually killed by them. Way to go, Carter! They set up camp and rest. Sarah has blood on her jacket from the baby Rex, and because of that, Big Papa Pump Rex smells it and searches the tent. Carter wakes up and screams, causing everyone to go crazy. Mama Rex stumbles upon them and chases everyone into a waterfall. What the? I sh yeah. Uh, Gucci? So you gonna. Ain't no way, bro. You gonna run because <clears throat> of a snake when there's a dinosaur in front of you? I'm just done. You're done because you got scared of a snake. <laughs> <laughs> Roland finally hunts the big Papa Pump Rex, but someone tampered with his gun and he ain't got no bullets to kill it. He uses some tranquilizer darts to put it to sleep and it works. Everyone runs to the tall grass, but people start getting picked off by raptors. One of those people being Ajay. They finally get to the worker village and Vince Vaughn calls for help. While all of this is happening, Sarah, Malcolm, and Kelly are being chased by the raptors, which, by the way, I love the tiger color pattern on the raptors. My favorite raptor designs for sure. Anyways, Kelly does this. You're not even trying to stop her, bro. <laughs> it's not the time to be playing around practicing the gymnastic tricks, bro. What are you doing? <laughs> 
At least this wasn't fully out of the blue because Kelly did mention she was cut from the gymnastics team earlier in the movie. Anyways, helicopters come and rescue everyone. Lodolo's like, congrats Roland, you did it, you sly dog! Roland is like, I've won, but at what cost? He's upset that he lost AJ. This would have actually been impactful if Roland and AJ were given more time on screen, bonding, and just adding more development to their friendship. But no. Actually, there was a deleted scene introducing Roland and AJ, but they cut it out. Why? I don't know. I, I honestly don't know. We cut to the docks of San Diego, where Ludlow is hyping up Jurassic Park San Diego. The boat where the Rex is in crashes, and we see why they crashed. Everyone on the boat was eaten. By what? I have no clue. I always thought it was raptors that caused this, but how are there even raptors on the boat? It definitely wasn't the baby Rex because it wasn't even on the boat. Big Papa Pump Rex escapes from the boat and rampages through San Diego, but before he does that, he needs to drink up on some pool water and eat a dog as a snack. Alright, now he's ready to rampage through the city. Ian and Sarah get the baby to lure the Rex back onto the boat. Ludlow finds a baby in the boat, but a Big Papa Pump Rex gets back in the boat and the baby Rex gets his first kill ever. Aww. Big Papa Pump Rex looks so proud. Sarah shoots the Big Papa Pump Rex with a dart to put it asleep before anyone comes to kill it. The boat heads back to Sorna and we get to see Hammond's speech on TV about how the dino should be left alone. And then we see the dinosaurs living on Sorna happily ever after. The end. Alright, there's a post credit scenes with the Croods and Nick Fury. You're lying. We gotta see this. I'm we gotta see this, bro. Where is that? <laughs> you gotta see it. It. <laughs> I'm kidding. Wait, wait. Morgan Freeman's in it too? The Croods with Morgan Freeman? A Morgan Freeman? Is Terry Crews in it? Terry Crews? <laughs> Terry Crews! Alright, so what did you guys think of the movie? It was pretty good. I liked it. That lady, I just hate that lady, bro. She did nothing good the entire Same. time. Yeah, no. Uh, the book is better. It yeah. is? I was... It's pretty good. i never seen it. Yeah. I, never I told Kyle so before good. that Eddie Carr, the guy who got split in half by the T-Rexes, uh, had a worse fate in this movie than he did in the book. Mm -hmm. Which one's pretty end, cool. Uh, whichever one you want it. Oh yeah, Sarah Harding in the book. She's not like a damsel in distress the whole time. She's pretty cool in the book because I think she like yeah. she doesn't kill him, but she like causes his death in a way. Yeah, like one of the characters. Yeah, but also, um, what what was your favorite um, part of the movie? Uh, honestly. <laughs> I'd have to say I had two, all right? When that lady fell on the glass, I thought she was actually going to fall and die. I was about to say finally. But actually, yeah. I really like the end part when the, the big dinosaur with his baby was just, you know, trying to teach him how to hunt. He's just like, you know what? He's like, he bit his leg. He's dumb. He's like, hey, go, go get him, Gus. Go get him, son. Go get him. <laughs> yeah, no, my favorite scene was also the, the, the trailer scene where it falls off the cliff. Mm. W movie. Yeah, it's actually one of the few um, scenes taken from the book that were added into the movie. This whole movie is, like, so different from the book, but not in a good way. Like Harry Potter? This whole The book was written so they could make this movie, and they took nothing from the book. Yeah. It's still a good... I, I still like it. There's some people who, like, don't really like it, but it's still fun to watch, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Does anyone here watch basketball? I watch basketball. I love basketball. Oh, I was wondering if you think Kevin Durant's going to join InGen. <laughs> Kevin Durant. <laughs> what? Wait, how does that make how does those two things correlate? So, uh, uh, that was our takes on The Lost World. What year did E.T. come out? Isn't this E.T.? Bro, oh, E.T. E.T.'s part of the lore now. Yeah. Um, can't wait for the new one to come out. Uh, the the uh, Crudes and Nick Fury crossover with voice by Morgan Freeman. Yeah, I can't wait for that. Yeah. So that was the Lost World. Was it good? Depending what good means to you. 
If you just want to be entertained and see action, check it out because it gets to it pretty quickly. If good means like the Joker or the Dark Knight or any good in depth movie, then uh, n no. Th the characters were not any good at all besides maybe Roland Temple at best. None of them made me feel fully engaged or made me feel emotionally attached to them. And a lot of the times, it's just them arguing and talking over each other. As Koa and Coleman mentioned, this whole thing would have not happened if Sarah and Vince Vaughn weren't such pansy asses in the movie. They caused a lot of the problems to happen. The trailer conflict, the destruction of communication, and overall putting the team at risk is all their fault. This movie wanted to end at the scene where help arrives and gets everyone off Sorna, and you can really tell as the San Diego act of the movie, which isn't bad by all means, was stitched in there, and almost doesn't feel fitting. Even Coleman was questioning if the movie was going to end once everyone got off the island. Well, can't wait to see what's about to happen, because there's no way this movie's about to end like this, bro. One. I feel like it was way too early in the series to have some sort of dinosaurs on the mainland, but that's just my take, of course. A lot of the scenes are just not as great as the first movie. This whole movie feels soulless character-wise, and I think if the characters were written better, the movie would have been up there with the first movie. I also mentioned earlier that Crichton wrote the novel just for four things from the book to be incorporated in this movie. That being the introduction of Site B, some characters, the character's equipment like the trailers in High Hide, and of course, the Tyrannosaur family. Now, I'm not saying that The Lost World should be a 100% copy of the novel. I'm just saying that the overall story of The Lost World was twisted, and a lot of it was to set up a sequel. Now, let me stop being harsh on it, and let me explain the things I do like. The dinosaur wrangling scene, Site B, the trailer scene, and the entertaining value of the San Diego scene. I also like the animatronics and CG used for this movie, and the introduction of new dinosaurs was nice too. This movie gets a swift C plus for me. This movie had a lot of potential, but it was executed poorly, and everyone in the movie just sounds so sad and depressed, and it's not all that fun to watch. I hope you guys liked the review of The Lost World, and if so, I believe you should like and comment on the video. We're a quarter way with 4 movies left. Next up will be the very mixed opinion based Jurassic Park 3. Until then, take care bubs. It's just them and, and there is another team but it's like comprised of like three people. And in the in, in the movie it's like, oh, the second team actually just wants to start Jurassic Park again. Yeah. Or in the other one they just want the dinosaurs. <laughs> Keep talking, keep talking. And um I click on that turning red one. What the fuck? Uh the book was better. Yeah, Co, the you fuck? seen the first movie, right? Jeez, I'm man. The behind the scenes of the Coleman Shack. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. I'm just I'm just like listening to his conversation. What are you talking about? I was listening to his nice nope. conversation. <laughs> Come on. This nice conversation about <laughs> about our our feelings on Jurassic Park. It was a nice movie. Can you look up Sarah Hardy Deviant Heart, please. I want to see what. <laughs> oh my gosh! Don't do this to me. Nah, I can't spell. Uh -oh. oh my gosh. Okay, there's nothing bad on it. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh. Yo, you have to put this in the thumbnail, bro. You have to. You have to. Oh my god. It's so recording, right? Yeah. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh my gosh. Is that Sophia Falcone? This? <laughs> Who is this? Why is this a thing? <laughs> Gosh! Oh, I'm so... They're just photoshopping them on people, but why? <laughs> oh my... What gosh! Oh my gosh. <laughs> is this Katy Perry? Hey. He's so bum! One hand holding all this up, bro. <laughs> oh my gosh! Who is this? Oh.